Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. As usual, we'll take you through the pages of our dailies as being made available and we'll have uh, G.D. Johnson join the conversation. G.D. Johnson, it's good to have you join us this Friday morning. Good morning, Justin. Good morning to you. All right, let's start off with the uh, Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And uh, looking at the front pages of the Daily Trust, uh, let's find out what big stories we have on the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, the banner caption reads, Auditor General uncovers multi-billion naira fraud in National Assembly. Auditor General uncovers multi-billion naira fraud in National Assembly. Three billion in Senate, 5.5 billion in House. It's shocking lawmakers are breaking the laws. Father, who's saying all of that? Uh, that's uh, this right as you find underneath uh, the caption. It brings us back to the conversation. Those who should uphold the laws, uh, the ones breaking the law. Uh, Nancy, that's why I just shook my head, you know, when you said that uh, multi billion naira fraud. Well, let's just move ahead. Why APC convention should postpone February. I take that again, why APC should postpone February convention. That's what uh, Carlos quoted to say. Explain source of your wealth, Adebanjo tells Akonde on Tunumbu. Uh, lack of trust, major challenge in COVID-19 vaccination. Sultan is also quoted on that. You also have Bichi Emirate holds special prayer today. And why we gave Buhari's son title, Emir of Daura. Quite interesting. These are some of the headlines you find on the Daily Trust newspaper. Away from that, we move on to the Daily Independent. And party politics uh, is what they have in mind uh, as your banner, uh, their lead story this morning. APC February convention uncertain as crisis persists in states. With a rider convention in February may lead to implosion. Uh, Carlo wants. Just below a pictorial, there are state uh, steering committees to oversee payout of $800 million to the poor. All right, that, uh, that's on the Daily Independent. Uh, on the red strip below the page, uh, stake or shareholders approve access a uh, bank's transformation to holding company. Jonathan Lawan Songulu celebrate Buhari at 79. Uh, insecurity may affect 2023 election. Jega former INET chair. APC chairmanship not a do or die affair. Yari Almakura and Akume. 2022 privatization of public health facilities will cripple sector that's according to the uh, MH. WUN uh, provisions of customs bill will paralyze free trade zone according to Nigerian export uh, promotion uh, zone. The Adebanjo challenges are conditionable to disclose sources of wealth. NJC bars three judges from promotion over conflicted ex party orders. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent this morning. Moving away from the Daily Independent, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Attorney General of the Federation, Raid Buhari, says mandatory direct primaries will cause confusion. That's on uh, the Punch newspaper. It's a board caption. Now, underneath, you have several riders. Malami's office sent its position two weeks ago, says Minister of Justice Source. Constitution of parties stipulates direct or indirect amendment will be difficult. Now, these are the riders underneath, and that issue is back again on uh, the front pages of our dailies. Buhari snaps calls to visit North and jets out to Turkey with wife and seven ministers. NJC sanctioned three judges for conflicting rulings, one on watch list. And you also have fans suspend workers as car confronts landing plane on Lagos airport runway. Federal government wants Nigeria's COVID-19 cases uh, increases by 630% in 10 days. Insecurity threatens 2023 polls, says Jega. VP inaugurates a GMOB center. It's also another caption you find. And uh, still looking at the page of uh, the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Salary deductions. Fighting monarchs cost you election. Not Regan. Uh, find out who's saying all of that uh, when you check out uh, this page. 
Lawan Bajabia Mila Ngige orders Hale Buari at 79. And you also have a more interesting caption. Hoodlums arrested for kidnapping on doe female worshipper during a vigil orders held. And reps demand dismantling of Lagos Southeast Abuja Roots uh, checkpoint. checkpoint. Uh, that's also another caption. Let's see if we can check this out. Uh, not entirely clear, but we just allowed that to slide this morning. That's the much that we can take. And just before we move away, governors vow to review federal government's proposed privatization of 10 power plants. That's it on the Punch newspaper this morning. And the last story on our table sir, this morning is The Guardian. Consent is hope deems for amended electoral uh, bill uh, with several riders. Uh, Buhari departs Abuja for Turkey Africa Summit returns on deadline day. Uh, lawmakers proceed to, on U tide recess. Turkey Trip uh, stores National Assembly uh, leaders' last effort to save amended bill. A fate of AKT Ocean governorship polls hangs over stalemate. All right, uh, more stories. NHIS uh, canvasses one cobra per second telecoms charge for health coverage of vulnerable Nigerians. Lagos indebted to retirees by over 30 billion naira, says pensioners chair. Emir decries 50% of land taken over by terrorists uh, warns a food crisis. Court orders arrest of Imo deputy speaker over alleged 75 million naira fraud. And finally, Nigeria at war SBM report reveals those are some of the stories you can find on the front page of The Guardian this Friday morning. All right, let's have GD Johnson share his thoughts on some of the uh, pages of the National Dailies. Uh, once again, good morning, GD Johnson. Good morning, Messi, and good morning, Justin. So good morning. let's start with the story of the Auditor General uncovering multi-billion naira fraud in National Assembly, three billion in the Senate, 5.5 billion in the hours of rent. And that's on the Daily Trust Again, newspaper. That, yes, yeah, that's on the Daily Trust newspaper. So let's start up so that we can have a trust for our argument, can build the trust of the audience in our, in, in, in our democracy. I don't think that um, the Auditor General should just come out to see him uncover. I think those that are involved should have been identified and their names should have been forwarded to relevant agencies for prosecution. You must go beyond uncovering, 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 uncovering. And we have argued that you have auditors, there are, are, are processes that are laid down funds will be released and assessed in, in, in public service. You have, um, the procurement bill and the rest, and then internal mechanism put in place the political alone cannot assess this fund without the compliance and agreement of the civil servants that are in place to help facilitate this. So what has happened to the Auditor General and all the civil servants that are meant to be gatekeeper, that are meant to be watchdog within the system to allow this humongous amount of money to get out of the National Assembly? The interesting thing is we will see it on the pages of the newspaper, will cry about it, will scream about it, and then they will continue business as usual. Nothing will come out of it. The general will scream as he has just screamed, and then nothing will come out of it. But it is sad to have lawmakers as lawbreakers. When you have people that should be making the law, people that should perform oversight function on the executive to prevent wastages and, and then wastages and corruption and mismanagement of funds, are the ones that are also mismanaging for it's, 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 it's unbelievable. I don't know why the National Assembly should have right to approve money, money to be spent, because their basic responsibility is lawmaking. When it comes to project execution, I think it should be left for the executive and it should be left for the civil servants, which are more or less like the foot soldiers of the executive. Let's see how it goes. We throw a spotlight on this particular issue and hopefully we we'll see a drooling that people being prosecuted. Otherwise, it will be as business as usual. If you uncover the type of corruption that has taken place in the National Assembly, that's why most of them want to die. Most of them want to die in office. And as soon as they get elected into the House of Rep or they get elected into the Senate, they don't come back home again. 
remain in Abuja. In view of, I've challenged them, let the Speaker of the House of Land, let him travel from Abuja to Lagos without the verify any of his security. And let the Senate President, that is from Yubi, let him travel to Yobe state where he's from, where he has represented since 1999 as a Rep member and as Senator since 2003. Let him travel to that particular place without this paraphernalia of office and let's see whether he will freely be able to travel. And all other as of rep members and senators, distinguished senators, to travel to your respected constituencies and district and let's see what will come out of it. Until we are serious about dealing with this issue, the issue of insecurity will not continue. They will continue to provide private security for them. They will provide private life for them themselves. They will provide everything that will, that will meet their comfort for them until we put ourselves on the red list. I don't think we are ready to make progress. We shouldn't power any government office that have elected public officials with generator. We shouldn't power their official residence with generator. We shouldn't. We shouldn't power Asura with generator. We should. Once there is no light, let every one of us um, have no light and they understand what an average Nigerian is going through. That's my take on, 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 on that. Um, the other story in the Daily Trust is a story of lack of trust. And we see we are dealing with trust today, for which is a major challenge for COVID-19 vaccination. And that's where the traditional rulers come in. Traditional rulers have moral authority. Religious leaders have moral authority. What are religious leaders and moral authority? and the traditional rule has done with respect to mobilization, education, and um, mobilization and educa education and mobilization of the average citizen of their followership. They have they are moral leadership over these people. Uh, people listen. We, we live in a society where people are too religious and too traditional. What are our traditional rule has doing with respect to encouraging people to get vaccinated? What are religious they are doing encouraging people to so if there's a trust problem, so it's a perceptual problem. That means it can be dealt with. So if it's trust, it's perceptual. And perception can be changed when you use opinion leaders. And when you use opinion leaders in, in, in public communication, whatever communication, be it public or commercial, you change perception. And that's the, that's where their role should come in. And they should be collecting five percent of the money that goes to the local government without them having any work to do. I think that responsibility of dealing with the issue of trust can be facilitated by traditional rulers and religious leaders. And it's very interesting in the north, the emirs and the sultans are both traditional rulers and religious leaders. So it's a twofold, it's a two-pronged approach. I think the sultan should call on the emirs and then all traditional rulers across the length and breadth of this country to encourage people to get vaccinated. You go visit the doctor for other ailment. You, you do not doubt doctors. When you go visit them to, for them to treat you over other ailments, how would you doubt doctors when they have come up with vaccine? And we should doubt them when with the different types of drugs they have come up to deal with different types of disease and illness. I think the traditional rule will be very, very useful in that regard when it comes to building the trust of the people in the vaccination. And I'm saying it as many people that are listening to us, please go and get the vaccine. I'll be getting the booster shot once available. Get the vaccine. I've been fully vaccinated. They said we need to get the second. We need to get the third, even if we can get the fourth. And even we need to get the booster shot. But I, I'll get it. I'll visit the, the health center where I took mine in the first instance. And I'll see if there are booster shots that are available. I'll take it. It's important for us to get vaccinated. Forget about all the conspiracies people are saying. It's your life, and your life is critical to you. And we see that is worth it. So the Sultan should call on. It's other traditional rulers to help us in this fight against people that have devices. I have my I have my reservations concerning the person, but nevertheless, a public health issue. It's not only about me, it's about every one of us. And it will be irresponsible for anybody not to take it. That's on the person. All right, uh, the, um, G. Day Johnson, let's uh, leave on the Daily Trust for a bit and uh, slide on to the punch. Uh, the electoral bill is still, uh, you know, 
being talked about, they're still being uh, topical around uh, major spheres. AGF writes, Buhari says, mandatory direct primaries will cause confusion. Uh, Malami's office uh, sent its position two weeks ago, says the uh, Ministry of Justice um, source. And now, Buhari right now is in Turkey and uh, is actually almost deadline. So what's the fate for that particular bill? The president has signed the bill anyway. However, okay. um, the, uh, you know, we've said it over time that the, the national assembly members did not do their due diligence. Due diligence in the sense that of carrying their party along, of involving the political parties that they are involved, that, that sponsored them for the election. And we have said that there are things that the national assembly can legislate on, and there are things that they cannot legislate on. It's like the national assembly legislating on the extension of their own tenure. Because they have the power of lawmaking. The fact that you have power of making laws does not give you absolute power to make any laws, responsible and irresponsible laws, to make laws that's an overreach. And we have said it that the National Assembly trying to make laws on how political parties should conduct themselves is an overreach because, in the first instance, there won't be National Assembly without the political parties. It is the political parties that sponsor candidates to seek election. And once you win the election, you become part of the executive or you become part of the judiciary. So as far as I'm concerned, I agree with the Attorney General, unfortunately for the first time, that um, this law will create confusion. To create confusion, you can't mandate parties on how to run. They are guided by their constitution. It is not gangsterism. It is not, it is not uh, legislative rascality. Legislative rascality and gang gangsterism cannot solve the problem in the polity. And let the National Assembly members leave each party to run its own affair based on the constitution of the party. And with respect to that electoral, we have said that the contentious area is that clause that made provision for this direct primary. Everybody seems to agree on every aspect of this electoral. And I think the president can sign this electoral act into law. And then this particular contentious aspect, send it back to the National Assembly. For them to have an amendment with respect to this, I'm telling them that you know, I've signed this in law or this area, this remove and deliberate on this, unless I have a clean copy, and then I'll sign this into a perfect, um, in any case, we get a perfect um, document. You see that, you know, I think another headline of the story, there's a particular newspaper that carried the story that law lawmakers threatens to override the president. Let's wait and see whether I want let Senate and by the Biamila led as of assembly, uh, as of rep, have enough courage and temerity to override the president in the first instance. But that law, um, that bill, with this contentious aspect of um, our party should conduct their primary, should not, should not. The advice of the Nigerian era should be taken with respect to that. And I knew one of the things that the political class do is to create confusion. They know what this thing will generate. Can you imagine the National Assembly leadership not discussing with the leadership of their party, not discussing with the presidency, and they went ahead to, 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 to send this bill. If you have different of the liars between the presidents and the National Assembly, and all of these officials involved did not do enough due diligence for them to know the thinking of the executive concerning that only God will help us when it comes to maintaining sanity. The politics. Okay, uh, let's just stay with the Punch newspaper this morning. NJC sanctions three judges for conflicting rule and one on watch lists. Uh, you remember the fact that in one week we had different court orders emanating from Kebi State, uh, River State, and Cross River State. What are your thoughts on this? Well, for democracy to thrive, you need an independent impartial. The judiciary is meant to be an habitat. And when there's an overreach between the executive and the legislature, but unfortunately, sometimes the judiciary takes sides, either with most times with the executive and on a few occasions with, 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 with the legislature. However, they are meant to be an independent habitat. They are meant to interpret the decision without minding who's called is God. And I think that the judiciary needs to clean itself, clean itself off of elements, elements that have brought that that temple of justice into this way. Because we, once you put, once you get to judiciary, it's about 
to get justice. And what is just? What is justice? Being just and being fair. Dealing with issue with that, with fairness, with that fear of favor. So where you have judges across, uh, there are principles that govern the law. There's the letter of the law. There's the spirit of the law. Now, both must be in tandem. What the law is saying. So you are meant to interpret what the law is saying. You are not meant to input your own personal opinion into what the law is saying with respect to any particular issue or dispute that is brought before you. Beyond putting those people's watch list, I think that those people should be sanctioned because they should be, the sanction should be um, until we are taking draconian steps, as in punitive steps, in punishing people that want to destroy this democracy through different types of political judgment, ill gotten judgment. Uh, we're not, we are not ready for this democracy because the judiciary is critical. A critical component of sustaining democracy. So I, I salute the great of the NGC, and I think they should do much more. They should do much more than that and address the the, the mess and clear the mess in the judiciary, so that we can have a clear judicial system with conscience, <laughs> with fairness, and with equity. All right, uh, let's talk about um, this one. It's still on the Daily Trust. Uh, you know, uh, Adebanjo is asking um, um, Akonde and Tinubu to, to explain the sources of their wealth. You know, people will tell you what in Mobi. He's the first person to work in Mobi. That's what they will tell you. Even senior journalists, when you listen to them talking and you ask questions, I've said it. If you want, if you really want to fight corruption, um, and we will get there, we will demand them to come up with the, those of them that are providing themselves to be presidential candidate in 2020, we ask them, after the all sort election in 1999, we ask Atiku to come up with the form he filled to the Code of Conduct Bill in 1999. We ask Tinubu to come up with the form in 1999, with the Code of Conduct Bill, to see the word he has in 1999 and the word he has now. And then people did we just insult that activity because they think we are fools. Said so, okay, he worked in Mobi, who was the director of this, was the director of that. What is the wealth of these people prior to 1999? And what is their wealth now, post-1999? If you really want to fight corruption, we should go to the Code of Conduct Bureau and get the form of the Rhine and get all the forms they feel where they declare their wealth and <coughs> their tax documents. Where is their wealth from? How come suddenly people become rich by getting access? They become stupendously rich by getting access to public funds. And how people insult your sensitivity? You see, did he steal your money? He was, he was, he was. He was he was Let them tell us this. And these are the questions we need to ask. What are the sources of their wealth? What are the sources of their wealth? How rich was Tinubu in 1999? How rich was Atiku in 1999? Our which was about 1999. And they will parade themselves, they will make money from the public post, and they will parade themselves as if if they, they fell from heaven and their money came and their money is I And what uh, your other man you have said um, with respect with respect to them explaining the sources, the sources of their wealth. If they are not bold enough to tell us how they make money, um, why should we elect them? Why should we trust them with public, with with with, with public fund? But in Nigeria, are ready to ask tough questions. And we ask people, you, you, have, you don't have any private business that you are running. You don't have any any private business. And then, recall in 2019, when William Brown went to the house of, of, of one of the gladiators in the political landscape, and they said, it does not collect government contract. It does not do this. It is his money. Can you just tell IRS? And then if this is your money, how much tax did you pay for you to have Will you ever come to your No problem. We are not arguing with you. You know the interesting thing? You can make whatever world. But how much taxes have you paid for you to have that amount of money that will you ever will come into your house? And we see the taxes you have paid in that financial year. Then we know that you made your money legitimately. We don't care whether you collect contract or you don't collect contract. But you must pay your taxes as at when due. Now, if you make money from this country and you are not paying your taxes, why should we trust you with public office? So these are basic questions. But you know what? The unfortunate thing about this our democracy is that the major problem of this democracy are some of my colleagues 
including myself, that are doing this program and are watching this program. The bane of this democracy has been journalists. If the journalists turn the bull eye, and we kept our eye on the pool during the military regime. If we turn spotlight on these actors and leaders, I'm telling you, Nigeria will be a better country. But you know what? Go and check those that are supporting them. Go and check many articles. There are many articles that are, there are many stories on the pages of newspaper that are news, not news stories. They are just sponsored. They are just sponsored stories. And people are talking. People are talking about it. And as if it's a major news story. So the, the major newspaper will put it on their front page news. The major news stations, broadcast stations put it in the headline of their story. Whereas these are sponsored stories by, by people that have political and economic interests. And then they will fool the citizenry as if they are major stories of the day. We will get there. Some of us will ask questions. They will tell us where they get the source of their wealth. They will tell us. When it comes to 2023, I've told people that care to listen. All their supporters, they can get two of their supporters and just to face me, for us to have a face of just two of their supporters, two of supporters of Atiku against me, two supporters of, of Tinubu against me. When we get there, let's come to it. Let's have a constructive debate concerning that. Two of supporters of, um, of, of, of Bokala Sarak, let's have a constructive debate. Let Nigerians, let's throw spotlight on this. So that Nigerians will know, so that we don't make mistakes that we can over and over and over and over and over, and we begin to grumble. Grumble over what? People are not talking about programs, they are not talking about policies they are going to do, they are talking about this is the person. And they want, it was unfortunate that the media can't even call them out, that they are even using a batch of style. Nigerians are called, I'm eating the call of Nigeria. Who are they fooling for heaven's sake? Who is calling you to be president? If you want to be president, you should be president. We don't want to adopt that president. Come out outrightly and tell us you want to run for presidency. And these are the programs I am going to do. These are the issues I'm going to address. Not to add on the guy to um, people are calling me and I've uh, needed your call. I would disappoint you. God will punish all those that are calling them. Let them call themselves. Please forgive me for 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 for, for that. I think um um, I, I, I think I think that responsibility that, but, for the that. Most important thing. You, you take it back. It's all right uh, because we're going to call your attention to it. Uh, I, I totally understand that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. in the course of this conversation, emotions can be very high, but it's also good for us to put our yeah, emotions. Emotion, emotion runs high, and there are, there are some things that are acceptable, and there are things that are not acceptable. Everyone is attached to his or her opinion. Let them support whoever they want to support. But the bottom line is that we all get the result we deserve. Um, for, 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 for that. Everyone is the democracy. But, but, but you know, let, let's also, you know, continue. God will bless everyone. Uh, God will no, bless Gide, everyone. Johnson. <laughs> Gide Johnson, you know, in, in, in the course of all of this, I totally understand um, whether or not some persons have declared, right, uh, everyone has a right to contest an election, uh, you know, vote and be voted for. I mean, of course, it's enshrined in the Constitution. And who we decide would usually be at the polls, you know, when the election comes. But looking at, you know, just uh, this is 2021 is almost over. I mean, we're getting to 2022, all things being equal. Uh, do you even think that, you know, we're ready as a people? No, it's what Jagat said. Jagat said this insecurity is one of the challenges, one of the major headlines. Former Professor Jagat said insecurity might affect 2023 poll. Are we sure we are going to have 2023 poll? And then if you check the headline of, <coughs> of most of the newspapers, um, where the chief whip of the Senate, Senator Jules Okali, um, said that um, APC February Convention will might likely so lead to the inclusion of a party yeah. that is an uncertainty. There is an uncertainty that is characterizing that because crisis persists across the state. I've asked people this question. A party that cannot put this house in order, cannot put the nation in perfect order. We've seen how these parties have moved from one crisis to another. For example, in PDP, no chairman of PDP has completed his tenor. National chairman has completed his tenor. Now, APC, that's PDP, and we've been under PDP for 16 years. APC has been bedeviled with crisis from inception. So, the party system, which is meant to be the avenue through which you Big people to run public administration is be devil with crisis. They cannot manage their affairs. How much could they manage the affairs of the country? And we have said it: a party that does not have respect for its own constitution 
when he wins election and gets to office, will not have respect for the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is too late for a leopard for rain to wash off the black spot in a leopard skin. So what characterized the administration of the party we characterize public administration. And we have seen the different degree of impunity, whether a BDP or an APC in public governance in, 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 in Nigeria. So the likelihood of us having an election in 2023 is, is very, very slim. It's very, very slim. The spate of insecurity that are, okay, now, even if we have the election, you know one of the challenges we are going to have is inconclusive election. Because if you are not able to conduct election in some certain places, are able to declare the result. But there's one thing that is very, very typical of Nigerian politician. You know what will happen? Actually, let me tell you for, for a fact, there will be an election. Mm. Let's use the Anambra, Anambra State as a case study. There will be an election. The political class and the non-state agents that are causing confusion, they work in tandem. They work in tandem, in tandem in the sense that they are the political talks they use to foment trouble during electoral processes, campaign, primaries, and the rest of it. So they will reach agreement among themselves. And you will see that there will be a, a pseudo peace, a pseudo, a pseudo peace across the nation so that we can conduct the election and we can have transition. They will go to business as usual with the speed of insecurity. Let me assure you there will be an election in 2023. You but, to go about these things. Uh, just before I, you know, I allow my colleague come through again, I want to, I, I want us to talk about the fact that, you know, we also hear that uh, China has volunteered to send some uh, security experts, you know, to Nigeria to help. So don't, don't you think that that also will go a long way in solving the problem of our insecurity and uh, I, maybe? Are we, the same, are we practicing the same democracy with China? I don't know why people. So we tell China that we are indebted to. China that we are indebted to, we send China, we allow China to send the security expert, so they will collect intelligence. People don't know about the security implications. China that has taken over the airport in Uganda, uh, so that we are indebted to. Now, we now allow China. China is offering to provide us with security for our election, so they will understand the structure of our political system. They will gather the intelligence. They will work on it. And then in 20 years, in 15 years, you will see the result of the intelligence. Are there fools managing critical infrastructure in this country? Are they not intelligent enough? Have you ever seen any nation allowing other security agencies to come into their nation? An election is critical. To whatever to public policy because whoever wins that election becomes the government and the government shapes public policy so we allow them to come we have surrendered our sovereignty then it's just a matter of time do these people think at all all right um now they are offering us like like the greek you know what is called the greek gift if you check the the the, the trojan horse so they will, they, they, they will come like a Trojan horse and will think that the horse embedded in the horse are soldiers. So at night, they will just come. You know what? And, and when men went to sleep, the enemy came to show tears. So overall, I am calling on my colleagues and I'm calling on you and I'm calling on every many Nigerian to speak totally against this. Even I did history as a boss. What I was doing in levels. If you study history, history, global history, African history, then you understand conquest, you understand diplomacy, you understand how nations were, were conquered. All what they need is to have control over our political system. Then you think that then they will, we will become subservient to China. Economically, we are already indebted to China. So politically, we will be indebted to China. Uh, it's a free form. Some of us that have never dreamt of getting the citizenship of any country because we can never substitute our African heritage for for for, for other heritage. I'm proud of my Nigerian heritage and African heritage. I think we should be taking in that direction. If that happens, if that happens, I've said it over and over and over and over. Again. 
if that happens, I think I'll seek the citizenship of another country and not that of Nigeria. All right, thank you. Because once they have access, all right, thank you so much, uh, uh, G.D. Johnson. He is the uh, chief lecturer at Nigeria Institute of Journalism, and we have been reviewing the front uh, pages of uh, major dailies. We must say a very big thank you for your thoughts and input this morning, G.D. Johnson. Messi, have a merciful Friday, and Justin, just have a jollification Friday. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, whatever that thank means. You. <laughs> Welcome, G.D. Johnson. All right, uh, today in history, we'll be going back 1936. Pope Francis was born uh, today. Uh, let's take that away. Thank you.